Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, so today I'm going to have kind of a different video. Um, I was having to rearrange my video game collection. Um, so I thought it would be a good time to get it all down and show you guys. Um, I love video games. I <laughs> love like JRPGs and stuff like that. RPGs are like my jam. And um, yeah, so I have kind of a big, huge collection. It's not huge, like for me it's huge, but like for other people it's probably pretty tiny. Um, I'll probably split it into um, two parts um, just because there's a lot and I'll probably ramble on about a whole bunch of it. Um, so uh, for the first video I will do, um, I'm a PlayStation stand, so uh, we'll do PS1 through PS3 and then we'll continue on through um, PS4 and then I have, um, my handheld games and um, some special editions that would be kind of cool to show you. So um, yeah, let's get started. Um, so my first um, console was a uh, PlayStation 2. Um, I had played on um, computer games and stuff before um, I got a console, but um, my parents just didn't really want me to have a console for whatever reason. I think they were just kind of like, oh, she just wants to do what everybody else is doing and she's not really going to play it enough that, you know, it's worth the money or whatever. I proved them wrong. <laughs> but um, yeah, so my first one was a PlayStation 2 and I worked all summer to earn money to buy it. And um, so yeah, so I had to play catch up for a while. And but PlayStation 2 is backwards compatible with um, PlayStation 1. So I have a few PlayStation 1 games. Um, I have the Final Fantasy Anthology. Yeah, Anthology. Um, I actually haven't played this. I bought it like years and years ago with the full intention of playing it and then never did. Um, it has Final Fantasy 5 and Final Fantasy 6. I'm not sure there's like a weird thing with Final Fantasy 6 VI and 3 where they're like interchangeable or something and so I'm not sure which one this is. I think it's actually 6, like the actual 6. I, I'm not sure. I haven't played them so, but I am glad that I have it. And then we have, um, they're all in order, uh, Final Fantasy 7. Um, this one kind of has like a long, complex story with it. Um, so let me talk about this one first and then I'll come back to Final Fantasy VII. So this was the first PlayStation um, game that I bought. It's Final Fantasy VIII and it is my absolute favorite Final Fantasy still to date. Um, this is the greatest hits version, but um, it was funny because I played my first game that I ever played was Kingdom Hearts and um, I found uh, Leon or Squall as he's named in the game in the original game uh, I found him and I was like oh my gosh I love him and I want more of him and then I was like oh my gosh there's a whole game about him and so like Fate Destiny just happened to find this like on sale one day at like I think it was like Fred Meyer or like like some random grocery store or whatever it was just like on clearance or whatever and I bought it and it was instant love I love it so much and then so after playing eight I had to get seven because everybody and like all my friends in high school were like oh my god you have to play Final Fantasy 7 especially if you love eight so tracked down a copy of it hard to find especially the PS1 versions long horrendous story along with this like we have a very love-hate relationship me and this game so I bought a used copy of it from GameStop and then um went to play through it on my PS1 PS2 and it would always freeze in the exact same part of the game so I played it through like maybe four or five times thinking okay maybe like you know not trying to like I couldn't figure it out so anyway it would always freeze at the exact same spot and so, um, finally contacted GameStop and was like, hey, like it's, I'm having issues with it. Can you send me a new one? They send me another copy. Okay, cool. So I'm like, all right, cool. Go in and play it. Freezes at the same part. <laughs> and I'm just like, what is the, like, why? And so I'm like, okay, it's obviously my PS2, right? So I borrow my friend's PS1 and freezes <laughs> played through it twice on my friend's ps1 both different copies that i had of it freezes in the exact same spot this is on disc one mind you like it's like i hadn't really been able to play anywhere near the full scope of the game so 
anyway, I ended up getting, um, they have like a really like old school PC version of Final Fantasy VII. And I ended up ordering that and trying to play it on my computer. Well, it's such a huge game that it would cause my computer to overheat and shut down all the time. And so I would constantly have to, um, <laughs> like open the disk drive, let it sit for a minute, put the disk drive back in and then let it like load back up so that I continue playing the game. Otherwise it would just like, I'd have to do that like every 20 minutes. Otherwise the, it would just crash. And like Final Fantasies, you can't save, like you have to use save points. And so I could not save all the time. And so I just had to be like super, super careful. Well, anyway, I managed to finish the game that way. So, but I didn't get to watch the final cutscene because it was too long. And so, um, yeah, it wouldn't, like, I couldn't get the disc drive to like, yeah, I didn't get to watch the final cutscene, but I did complete the game. Anyway, so years go by and they finally release the, um, like digital version on PlayStation 3. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, finally I can have this Final Fantasy VII experience. <laughs> and so, um, I downloaded it and I started playing it and everything and um, <laughs> I got almost all the way to the end and I was like, okay, I'm going to go to work and I'm going to, you know, like, so my roommate apparently decided that he wanted to see the final scene because I was like right at the end of the game and he wanted to replay the end again because he'd played the game before and he's like, okay, and he went through the end of the game and then saved over my save file. And so, and I, I, like, I was, any of my other save files, it was too far away. I just gave up. Like, I was like, I am never going to see it. Like, I ended up watching it, like, on YouTube, so I've seen it. But, like, I was just like, this game hates me. I don't know what is up with this game. Like, Final Fantasy VII and me just, like, I loved the game. I thought it was great. I loved it. It hates me. It really does. So um, the Final Fantasy VII Remake's coming out. Um, I'm probably not going to get it right away. Um, I'm, like, I'm like kind of excited for it, but like, I don't know. I'm also like tentative because this game hates me. Like it seriously does. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, Final Fantasy VII and me. Like I kept this copy just to have, even though it apparently doesn't work. Um, I have no idea what the problem was. I don't, what are the odds that I would have gotten two copies that don't work? I have no idea. But anyway, craziness. But um, Final Fantasy VIII is my favorite. Um, and yeah, I absolutely love it. I just got the remaster um, digitally. I wish it had gotten like the full pretty remake version that Seven had gotten, but <sighs> it's not meant to be. Squall is my, my like ultimate video game husband, by the way. I love him. Um, and then I have Final Fantasy IX. Um, this was a really great game, too. I bought it, obviously, after 8 and 7 because I was just like, oh my god, I need more Final Fantasy. And so this one's kind of different. It's off the beaten path of normal um, Final Fantasy games. And I've only played it the one time, but um, I remember really, really liking it. Like, it's kind of more, like, chibi and cute, but it also has, like, a really deep story. And it has more of, like, the focus on the crystals like some of the Final Fantasies do. It was a good one. Like, I definitely recommend it. I think it's kind of like a cult favorite. Like, everybody loves it, but it's kind of one of those ones that just kind of flies under the radar. Um, and I have two more PlayStation 1 games. So I have um, Spyro the Dragon. Um, that wasn't my first Spyro game. Um, I actually got this, um, like, a long time ago. Uh, like, a long time after I got my first Spyro game, which was, which I... Like, this one isn't as good. Like, um, I like it, but it's just all right. And then, but Spyro 2, Ripto's Rage is, like, my absolute jam. It's my favorite. Um, it was actually the first video game that I ever played, like, seriously. And, um, I had played it over at a friend's house. And, um, yeah, I just, like, fell in love with it. And that's actually, this is, this is the game that actually like made me want to save to get a PlayStation 2 because I knew I could play it on there. And so this was one of the first games I bought, um, after the fact. So, yeah. So that's all my PS1 games. Um, like I said, I came in during the PS2 era. So yeah, but here we go with PlayStation 2. 
Um, so we have Devil May Cry, the very first one. Um, this is the only Devil May Cry besides the new, um, newer uh, DMC, like the, the reboot one that I've actually completed because I suck at these games. Like, I really want to love them and play them all, but I really suck at them. I get stuck every single time. It's actually a miracle that I managed to complete this. Um, I have a few more Devil May Cries, but um, Dante is super cool, super stylish, and I love him, even though I can't play his games. <laughs> so there's that. Um, and then Gauntlet Dark Legacy. Um, this is an amazing game. Like, I love it. Um... Sometimes it doesn't want to work on my PlayStation 2, which makes me like really, really sad. But um, I used to go over to my best friend at the time growing up uh, and play this game at her house all the time. And we were like addicted. And so once I got my own PS2, I tracked down a copy for myself. And then we have Resident Evil Code Veronica X. Um, I have yet to completely play this game. The uh, tank controls kill me every single time. I have so much trouble with them. I managed to play the original Resident Evil 2 with the tank controls, but it was difficult and I used a walkthrough the whole time. This one, I just, I would always die at like the same point and so I just kind of gave up on it. One of these days I'll get like a wild hair and try to finish it. I've heard it's really, really good, but I just haven't finished it. Glad I have it though. <laughs> and then we have uh, Resident Evil 4. Um, I love Resident Evil 4. It is my absolute favorite. It was my first Resident Evil game that I ever played. Um, I picked it up on PlayStation 2 and um, played it all the way through and have since bought it on, let's see, I bought it on Wii. I don't have it anymore, um, but uh, I bought it on Wii. I bought it on PlayStation 3 and I bought it on PlayStation 4. So Obviously, I really love this game, and I've played it through all the way on all of those platforms, too, by the way. So, um, I've played it several, several times, and I absolutely love Leon. He's my absolute favorite. Um, he's just so cool. Like, I just love him, and uh, Leon's, like, one of my favorite names. Obviously, like, oh, Leon in Kingdom Hearts, Leon in Resident Evil, like... I have a name type. It's fine. Anyway, but... Um, it's even, like, it's, I'm not, like, into super horror. Like, I like Resident Evil, but I don't really like horror. And this is kind of, like, more, like, it's scary. You're going to get jump scares and stuff every once in a while. But this is, like, so, like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, I didn't find it, like, super, super scary. Like, the first time I played it, I played it with a walkthrough because I was freaking terrified. But now I know the game, like, the back of my hand. So I guess I'm kind of, like, desensitized to it. So I don't want to say it's not scary. It was definitely scary for me the first time, but I think it's more on like the tamer side, um, especially because you're not using those freaking tank controls. So um, it's a little bit easier to navigate and stuff, but one of my favorite games of all time, this one. And then we have, now we're getting back into Final Fantasy. You'll, you'll quickly find out that I have, um, yeah, types of, <laughs> so we have Dirge of Cerberus, uh, Final Fantasy 7. So this is the game that focuses on Vincent Valentine um, and it's kind of like a side story that goes into like his relationship with uh, Lucrecia which you know about if you did like the extra side quest for him in Final Fantasy 7. Um, excellent game. I really wish that they would um, put out some kind of remaster for it so that I could play it again. I still have my PS2 but oh my gosh it's so hard to go back sometimes. Um, and I'd have to set it up and everything. I'm lazy, but, um, yeah, it was an excellent game. Like it was the Final Fantasy's first like foray into like a shooter, I think. And it was really, really good. Like I really enjoyed it. Um, plus Vincent Valentine's like the coolest. So yeah. <laughs> and then we have Final Fantasy 10. Um, this is an excellent, excellent game. I remember being completely addicted to it. I came into all these games like super late um, because I got my PlayStation 2 so late. Um, Cause like, I think like the PS3 came out like a couple years after I got my PS2. So like I got it really, really late. Like most of my games are greatest hits or like things like that. And so, yeah, but this is an excellent game. It has such a deep, beautiful story and I just love it like and the artwork is so pretty and like the characters are so cool and so 
Yeah, there's Final Fantasy X and then <laughs> Final Fantasy X 2, which is like the weird sequel. <laughs> it's good. Um, as good as the first game? No. But it has some three badass male or male female leads, and so I actually really enjoyed this game. I never unlocked all the endings though, because yeah, it wasn't good enough to play like five times. So, <laughs> but I still have it. And then we have Final Fantasy XII, which is a really, really great game. Um, I kind of had hate for it for a little while um, because I never was able to finish it. Um, it would have parts where you would have to um, go and just like, like it would warn you to save. And so like you had to make like multiple save files. Well, anyway, I messed up towards the end and I was not level high enough to defeat the final boss. I kept dying just trying to get to the final boss and I did not have any save files that would go backwards. Um, if you've played this game, it is extremely time consuming and so I was in no mood to go back to the beginning and play the game all over again. So, or even make up all the hours in between like my last valid save and you know, where I was. And so I put it off for a long time. I had never finished it. I still have never finished it because a friend of mine and me, we were playing the um, Zodiac Age edition together and we still haven't finished it because we got distracted by other stuff. But I'll talk more about it later when I get to the Zodiac edition that I have. Um, and then we have Kingdom Hearts. This was the, my first ever like actual video game purchase. I bought it with my, it didn't come with it, but I picked it out. I bought it with my PS2 when I bought it. And I love Kingdom Hearts. It's one of my favorite, favorite games. Um, so many good memories with it. Um, like me and my little sister would stay up late and play it together. Like she would watch me play and it's just got such good memories associated with it. And definitely one of the best, like I probably couldn't have picked a better game to be my first game. I love Disney. I love, and then I grew to have the love of Final Fantasy through it. And I just love it so much. So then we have Chain of Memories, Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. So the uh, sequel, like mid sequel um, to Kingdom Hearts. And I actually really enjoy this game. A lot of people don't like it because it has the weird like card style fighting or whatever but once you get used to it it's, it's kind of fun and so I really enjoyed it and I really liked the organization members and everything and like learning how they all tick and everything and so I'm really glad that I have it and yeah of course I loved Kingdom Hearts 1 so much of course I would get Chain of Memories which I actually have this too for Game Boy Advance which is when uh, uh, Kingdom Hearts uh, Chain of Memories originally came out on don't know why I have this because I never had oh wait no I had a I had a DS that was compatible with this and that I played it on um it's long gone now but um yeah so I have that kind of forgot I had that I didn't have it in my pile um and then we have Kingdom Hearts 2 um I remember uh when this came out um I didn't have the money to buy it and I think it came out around my birthday and I remember my dad being like because I was just like man I really want this game like everybody at school's talking about it and I really want it like but I'm gonna have to wait and then my dad was like okay happy birthday let's go get it and like I remember being so happy like I got it maybe a few days after it came out and I was just like so freaking happy and I just played like the crap out of it. Kingdom Hearts 2 is my favorite Kingdom Hearts game. I love it. Um it's my absolute favorite. Like I love one and Chain of Memories. Three's all right. I'll talk more about that when I get there. Um, but two, I think is absolute perfection. I love it so much. I've played it like three or four times in, in, its, in its entirety, like completed 100%. And I, I just love it. It's so good. <laughs> I can't, I know I'm just going to say it's so good like the entire time, but yeah, that's a good one. All right, so now we're moving. That's all my PS2 games that like survived my um, GameStop addiction back in the day. So those are all the, the good ones that stayed with me forever and I'll never get rid of them. So next we have PlayStation 3, um, Devil May Cry again. I bought the um, 
Classics HD collection. Um, yeah, I was never able to com re-complete one. I must have gotten lucky the first time I played it, and then I completely epically failed at the other two, so I haven't completed them, but I really like the games, and so I just don't have the heart to, like, get rid of them. Uh, Devil May Cry 4. Um, I tried to play this one again recently, and... Guys, I really suck at these games. <laughs> like, I cannot get enough, like, points, like, through the hack. And, like, I'm just not good at it, I guess. And so I can't get enough style points to, like, beat some of the, like, criterias and stuff. <laughs> and so, um, yeah. But I really enjoy, like, the characters and stuff. And I really wanted to. And this was a Christmas present from my mom once upon a time. And so, um, yeah, I just don't have the heart to get rid of it. Um, I'll probably never be able to complete it, but, you know, whatever. Maybe someday, uh, maybe someday I'll be able to figure it out. So then I have uh, Dragon Age. This is Dragon Age Origins and the expansion Dragon Age Awakening. Um, I also have this on digital because um, my PlayStation stopped, my PS3 stopped reading discs before it completely died, and then I bought a new one, but, so... Yeah, this is like one of my favorite games. I've played it like five or six times. I have it completely platinumed out. Um, Alistair is my boyfriend. Um, I try every single time to romance someone different, but gets me every single time. I love him. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, Dragon Age Origins is great if you like um, like um, RPGs and um, it kind of plays like D&D &D a little bit, like it's got, you know, all the like stat bonuses and stuff like that, like you put your points where you need to put them and like everything like that, and I just really, really love it. It has an amazing story, and the characters are just so vibrant and cool, and it's a create your own character type game, and I just really, really enjoy it, so um, check it out if you haven't, like if, if it seems like your jam, check it out because it's really, really good. And then, of course, we have Dragon Age 2. Um, not as good as the first game. I really liked the setup of the first game, like, battle-wise. And this one kind of takes it to more of, like, a hack-and-slash type deal. That's not really the proper term for it, but I don't know what the proper term for it is. The story, however, is still great. And the characters are still amazing. Um, just not as good as the first one. And I still love it. I've played it several, several times. It's almost platinumed, but not quite. But yeah, still love it. And then we have Final Fantasy and it's all messed up right there. Like poor Yuna. I don't know what happened to it, but it got messed up. Um, Final Fantasy um, 10, 10, 2, um, the like deluxe edition or whatever, um, HD remaster. So this had like, a, like an art book or something in it. Um, but yeah. So I had to buy this just because I'm Final Fantasy stan and yeah, I just like buying everything Final Fantasy. So there we go. I, am, I have not completed replaying either one of them on there because <laughs> I'm just lazy and I always have new stuff that I need to play. So yeah, but they're good to have for a collection. Then we have Final Fantasy 13. Um, I waited until this was out before I bought a PS3. And it's not my favorite game, but the nostalgia kept me alive. It kept me going when I had moved away from home and I needed something to distract myself from, you know, the loneliness that comes with kind of being by yourself. And, you know, sometimes you just need a good time waster and that's definitely what this is. There's so much leveling up and stuff like that that you have to do, all this grinding. Um, the story's all right. I never really connected with any of the characters very much. Um, I don't hate it, but I don't love it either. Final Fantasy 13. I'm not sure if I said that, but that's what it is. <laughs> um, and then I have Final Fantasy 13 Lightning Returns. Um, this is my favorite game. There's, uh, three games for Final Fantasy 13. Um, notice that I don't have number two. Um, I had it at one point and I hated it so much that I got rid of it. But I did manage to pick up Lightning Returns, and I have to say that even if you didn't like one or two, definitely recommend this game. It is so good. Like, it focuses just on lightning, and 
and she kind of has to like and it has a cool mechanic because you have to like kind of race against the clock so you have time limits to get all this stuff done and if you don't get it done it'll restart you from the beginning of the game because you're trying to save the world and so if you don't meet all the time requirements and everything you get punished for it by getting sent back to the beginning of the game and I think a lot of people didn't like that but it's easy to complete all of them like I did it and I'm like I'm horrible at time management so <laughs> there you go um definitely recommend it if you haven't played it I'm sure at some point Square Enix will be like hey Final Fantasy 13 remake you know remaster collection or whatever so Lightning Returns is definitely worth it um and then we have Heavy Rain Director's Cut. So this is kind of a like interactive like um, mystery game. So there's like a crime that happens and you have to solve it. And I really, really liked it back in the day. It's very, very interesting, especially if you like the whole like crime solving aspect and stuff like that. It's been a really long time since I played it, so I can't really like say much more than that. But I really love it and it's a kind of like an interactive like um almost like a simulator like crime solving simulator or something but it has like a really deep interesting story and you go into different characters perspectives trying to figure out the mystery and everything and it's really really good and then we have uh kingdom hearts uh what is this 1.5 remix so this has and this is like the special edition or whatever so this has like an art book and stuff and this has a uh, chain of memories uh kingdom hearts one and um i think a movie it's the movie for the um 358 slash two days which was a ds title back in the day which i actually played all the way through the ds title back in the day i don't have it anymore but yeah. definitely a Kingdom Hearts fan so I have like everything that you can get and then I have uh, Kingdom Hearts 2.5 remix which this has Kingdom Hearts 2 final mix uh, Birth by Sleep which I had on PSP at one point but I don't have my PSP anymore so I don't have it anymore and then it has like a movie version of Recoded which I had actually never played um, but yeah I missed out on the special edition one but had to buy it still and then I have a Resident Evil 5 um, this is the gold edition so let's take that off since it's reflecting so bad um, this is Resident Evil 5 and I really liked it um, picked it up I think not long after it came out or when it came out and um, you can play co-op with this one and I actually used to play co-op with my um, one of my friends and we would always make jokes about how Chris's arms are huge and <laughs> um, it's hard to see if you're playing co-op because his arms are so big but um, I really really like this game too um, this one oh wait no this is the uh, I must have picked this up a while after it came out then because this is the gold edition so it has like all the DLC and stuff um, but, um, it has a really, really cool DLC called, uh, Lost in Nightmares that, like, takes you kind of back to, like, the creepy mansion stuff, and I really enjoyed that, but it's a great game as well. I am, I love Resident Evil, so. And then Resident Evil 6. Resident Evil 6 I picked up when it came out. I remember being very excited for it. Unfortunately, it's not my favorite Re Resident Evil game. It was a little too, um... I don't know like it would just send you into like hordes of zombies all the time and I just kind of hated it but um it was cool that it had three different protagonists instead of just one it follows uh Leon Chris and um which I was like Leon um like <laughs> I was just so excited to see Leon again so it could be the worst game ever and I'd be like yes Leon. but anyway yeah it's a good game still like I think it holds up and but just not my favorite. Four will forever be my favorite, so nothing can beat that. This is a close second for my favorite, though, of uh, Resident Evil. Uh, Resident Evil Revelations. Um, this is kind of a side game, um, but it takes place on, like, a, uh, like, luxury liner out in the middle of the ocean that gets overtaken by monsters, and you play as Jill and a couple other side characters that are new to the series in this game. 
and it's it's really really good. This is probably beside this is probably my second favorite Resident Evil game, besides um, Resident Evil Four. All right, well that's it for my PS One um, through PlayStation Three. So those are all the games I have for that. Um, so. Yeah, um, I actually have a podcast that I do with one of my friends. Um, we use our gamer names in it, so I go by Kate in the um, podcast, but it's called Players Gonna Play, and you can find that um, pretty much anywhere that you can listen to podcasts if anybody's interested. Um, yeah, so I'll try to link one of them down below. We'll see how that works, but um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed part one of my collection, and stay tuned for part two where I'll talk about um, PS4 and all my handheld and special editions. Thanks, I hope you enjoyed.